When you fall head over heels in love on the internet, you just know. When you commit a class two felony, the cops know. Reality stars to prison bars, these 90-day fiancés got dirty with the law. Jeffrey Paschal joined the hit franchise for the 2020 season of 90 Day Fiancé before the 90 days, embarking on a long-distance romance with the Russian-born Varya. But viewers weren't told about Jeffrey's lengthy criminal record. Around the same time the season debuted on TLC, Jeffrey was in court facing charges ranging from aggravated kidnapping to domestic assault. The charges had resulted from his 2019 arrest over an allegedly violent altercation with an ex. At the time, backlash was severe. Fans even launched a petition calling for Jeffrey's removal from the show. I am your free ride to America. In 2022, Jeffrey was convicted on all four charges he'd been hit with. He was sentenced to 18 years in prison with no possibility of parole. The DA in the case referenced Jeffrey's previous conviction for possession with intent to sell a controlled substance, for which he reportedly spent 13 months in prison, in addition to two federal drug trafficking charges as the reason for the stiff sentence. Paul Stale's volatile relationship with Brazilian wife Karini first played out in Before the 90 Days, and then in 90 Day Fiancé the other way, and again in Happily Ever After. As it turned out, Paul had a criminal record dating back to an incident in 2007, when he was arrested and charged with arson after allegedly setting a fire intended to defraud an insurance company. Seven years later, he was convicted of felony arson, and presumably spent some time behind bars. According to the Kentucky Department of Corrections, he was under supervised probation that was scheduled to conclude in 2020. But that wasn't Paul's only brush with the law. In 2013, he was arrested and charged with ignoring an emergency protective order after an incident involving an ex-girlfriend. She had secured a domestic violence order that prohibited Paul from getting anywhere near her. Paul addressed the incident on the show in 2017. I'm still a secret about my past, and I haven't quite explained it all to Karina yet. Viewers were first introduced to Darcy Selva in the very first season of Before the 90 Days, back in 2017. She proved to be such a fan favorite that in 2020, she and her identical twin Stacy were tapped for their own spinoff, Darcy and Stacy. But that sibling bond turned violent during a late-night fight that required police intervention, with both sisters placed under arrest. According to a report in the Middleton Press, each twin was issued a misdemeanor summons for disorderly conduct after an argument got physical. A statement from the arresting officer included Stacy claiming that Darcy had been hurling objects, while Stacy admitted that she knocked over a lamp and flipped a table. The police report noted, witnesses reported observing both of them fight with each other. One witness stated that they both started arguing with each other and it eventually escalated into a catfight. During a 2018 appearance on the 90 Day Fiancé After Show, Stacy admitted they were arguing but denied that it became anything more. You know, we did argue it was late at night, and, you know, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but, mm, you know, we, we learned our lesson. I need the Josh Patterson and his Filipino bride-to-be, Aika, made their debut on the fifth season of 90 Day Fiancé in 2017. But one of Josh's previous relationships took a wrong turn that landed him behind bars. In March 2010, he was arrested and booked for disorderly conduct and assault, following an altercation in which he allegedly punched his 28-year-old then-wife in the face and shoved her down an embankment. The charges were subsequently dropped when the woman refused to cooperate. I have been married, actually, two times, and neither one of them worked out. But that wasn't his only arrest. In 2007, he was arrested on DUI charges, with no further information given. Josh's ex, Mel, later opened up about the assault, telling Reality Blurb, he did punch me in the face that night for sure. I didn't press charges because it was the first incident and I was stupid and in love. Tim Clarkson and Colombian girlfriend May Lisa were first introduced in the second season of 90 Day Fiancé The Other Way. After a rocky start, she was able to forgive his infidelity and accept his proposal in 2021. She told People at the time, our engagement feels right. Putting a ring on it doesn't solve it all, but it's definitely a big step in the right direction. Surely one that we wanted to take years ago. The couple then surprised fans the following year when they announced in a quickly deleted Instagram post that they had welcomed a baby. I also get really scared that maybe I've done too much damage. But prior to meeting his future fiance, Tim was busted for a DUI back in 2015. According to court documents, he had initially been pulled over for an expired registration. Because this was his first offense, he was reportedly released a few hours after his arrest and initially entered a plea of not guilty. He subsequently changed that plea to guilty and cut a deal, 
avoiding prison by paying a fine and taking a 48-hour drunk driving education course on weekends. Danielle Jabali has been a part of the 90 Day Fiancé universe since she first appeared on season two, along with her future Tunisian ex-husband, Mohammed. All this drama that you're doing is not gonna help. But nearly a decade earlier in 2004, Danielle was arrested and charged with theft and forgery over a bad check. The felony charges were ultimately dropped and she was instead convicted on one count of misdemeanor theft. She was sentenced to probation for two years and was also ordered to pay back the $610 owed on the check. Danielle told Starcasm, I stopped payment on a check, and when that expired, the person tried to cash it and then took me to court for passing a bad check. Looking back on what happened nearly 20 years later, Danielle explained, People make mistakes and regret it, but it does not mean they are a bad person. There are circumstances that explain why people do stuff, and it isn't right to keep bringing it up after so many years have passed. Brett, John Walters, and American fiancé Rachel Bear appeared in the second season of 90 Day Fiancé before the 90 Days, back in 2018. They tied the knot that same year, but John's journey to America was complicated by the criminal record that followed him from Great Britain. As he explained on the show, his record involved assault charges from his younger days. I grew up in, in not a great area, having to choose between being stamped on or, or fighting to get away. One of those fights took place while he was attending university, when he got physical with a group of guys who were trash-talking him and his friends. I got really mad, and they tried grabbing me, and, and by the end of it, they all got a punch. He was ultimately convicted of bodily harm without intent. While he didn't do any time, the conviction resulted in him getting kicked out of school. Walters insists that the violent brawler of his youth is no longer who he is, now that he's older and wiser. Larissa Dos Santos Lima made a splash on 90 Day Fiancé Season 6. Her volatile relationship with Colty Johnson provided an endless stream of drama until she was fired by TLC due to a lingerie-themed webcam show that the network deemed too steamy. I want one million dollars from Colt, but it's better two hundred than nothing. But during her time on the series, the Brazilian-born influencer had a few scrapes with the law. In 2018, she was arrested after a scuffle in Las Vegas with then-husband Colt. A police spokesperson told People, it was determined that Dos Santos had committed battery domestic violence on her husband and was transported to the Clark County Detention Center. A few months later, her lawyer managed to negotiate a plea deal so that the charge was reduced to disorderly conduct. She was arrested two more times for domestic battery on both occasions. Then in 2020, she was arrested by ICE, with her lawyer calling it a misunderstanding regarding her immigration status. She was subsequently released. George Nava debuted on the very first season of 90 Day Fiancé alongside his Russian fiancé and Fisa. Their relationship immediately devolved into a train wreck, even before they tied the knot. I'm not gonna screw myself over just because you wanna be happy. In February of 2018, George found himself in hot water when he was pulled over in Arizona. He was arrested when a search of his vehicle revealed he was transporting a whopping 293 pounds of marijuana. Because of the volume of weed, George faced Class II felony charges, punishable by up to 10 years in prison. He managed to cut a plea deal, pleading guilty to a Class IV felony, and was sentenced to two and a half years in the slammer. During his incarceration, George embarked on a fitness regimen, ultimately shedding 128 pounds. He described his prison time on 90 Day Fiancé bears all. What am I going to do in here for two years? Yeah. And then uh, slowly but surely, you know, you start to get used to the prison life. Mm -hmm. In 2014, Jason Hitch was profiled in the second season of 90 Day Fiancé, documenting his marriage to Brazilian bride Cassia. The marriage didn't last, and the duo separated in 2017 and filed for divorce the following year. A reason for the split was likely an alleged violent incident in 2017 that ended with Jason's arrest. According to the incident report, the couple were arguing while lying in bed, at which point Jason grabbed Cassia by the arm, allegedly leaving a red mark on her skin. He then pushed her, sending her tumbling to the floor, and screamed at her until she called 911. He was freed after posting a $500 bond, with charges later dropped. In 2021, Jason died of complications from COVID. He was 45. Chuck Pothast made his 90 Day Fiancé debut on season 5, later returning for 90 Day Diaries. He was a supporting player in the story of his daughter, Libby Pothast, and her Moldavian husband, Andre. I just want us to like, have some fun as a family. But back in 2009, Chuck was arrested in Florida over thousands of dollars in unpaid child support. At the time, he was facing a contempt of court charge for being delinquent on those payments 
to the tune of $17,564. He presumably paid up in order to avoid jail. In addition, his business, CDC Capital Investments, was reportedly involved in several lawsuits. These suits alleged that the company was running a scam that involved renting out homes on which banks had already foreclosed, forcing tenants to move out on short notice. Reviews on Yelp aren't exactly glowing, with reviewers describing the company as crooks, evil, horrible, and very unprofessional. Ben Rathburn first joined the 90 Day franchise for season 5 of Before the 90 Days with his Peruvian girlfriend, Mahogany. In March 2022, Ben was arrested, reportedly on suspicion of drunk driving, with bail set at $10,000. It was later revealed that the DUI arrest occurred back in 2020, for which he was eventually sentenced to 18 months of probation. The 2022 arrest came about because he missed an appearance at a probation violation hearing the previous month. When he was a no-show, the judge issued a bench warrant, which landed him behind bars. Uh, it's not, it's never encouraging. Ben was fired from his job with the Michigan Lupus Foundation over the arrest, offering his side to the story involving a spiked alcoholic drink and liquid Xanax, he told In Touch. In September of 2020, I went to help a homeless couple living at a red roof inn, and when they offered me a little plastic cup of wine, I stupidly accepted. The next day, I attempted to drive home and hit the curb, disabling my car. The police did a breathalyzer and found no alcohol, but later they did a blood draw at the station and found flubromazolam in my system. I feel like I don't have to defend my past because it's behind me now. If you or anyone you know may be the victim of domestic violence, contact the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233. You can also find more information, resources, and support at their website.